Greetings, I'm Dr. Bobby Price, your plant-based pharmacist and nutritionist, also author of Education Over Medication, right here over my shoulder here. So today I'm gonna to be talking to you about vitamin D and more specifically, the eight reasons why you could be potentially vitamin D deficient. Now there's a much longer list, but I'll be talking to you about these eight because these are the ones that I typically see with people, okay? I not only be talking to you about that, but I'll also be talking to you about why is there such a huge concern when you're vitamin D deficient? Because most people don't take it serious enough, okay? And so to begin, let's explain what is vitamin D. Vitamin D actually isn't a vitamin, it's actually a hormone, okay? And we're primarily supposed to get our vitamin D from the sun. As a matter of fact, that's the way um, that plants are able to grow. They actually take the sunlight and then convert that into energy using photosynthesis. So in many ways, we are much like plants. We take the energy or the light from the sun and we convert that into something. And one of those things is vitamin D. OK, and so let's talk about what happens if you're vitamin D deficient. OK, a few things. One of the things that could happen when you're vitamin D deficient is it actually increases the risk for cardiovascular disease. So that means everything from stroke, heart attack to hypertension, okay? And I don't need to tell you that cardiovascular disease is actually the number one killer of all humans, okay? So that's a huge reason to be concerned for, okay? The second thing will be is that it increases the risk for pregnancy complication and miscarriage, okay? And many studies, they've seen that when you've been vitamin D deficient, even at levels less than 45 nanograms of vitamin D, it increases a lot of the risk associated with miscarriage and also pregnancy complication, okay? Another thing that it can cause an issue with is vitamin D deficiency will actually cause severe asthma in children, okay? So a lot of times you'll see children who have severe asthma, they'll also have vitamin D deficiency, okay? Huge reason. Another thing is that it will actually suppress your immune system, okay, or increase your risk for actual infections. And the reason why is because vitamin D, being a hormone, is actually responsible for helping to modulate the immune response. So when you have an infection, whether it be bacterial or whether it be a fungus or whether it be a virus, your immune system has to respond. And one of the, the controls in that response is vitamin D. It's modulating that response and how it responds to that particular infection, okay? So needless to say, if you're vitamin D deficient, you're gonna have issues with that, which also leads to an increased risk of cancer as, as well because our immune system is what is actually fighting cancer, okay? Even if you take chemo or something like that, it is actually your immune system that actually kills the actual cancer. So when you take chemo, you do radiation, it kills good cells and it also kills cancerous cells. But it is your actual immune system that actually kills the cancer and then brings your body back into health. So that's another huge reason. And then as you know, when you're vitamin D deficient, you will also have brittle bones as well. So let, let's get into the eight potential reasons uh, you could be vitamin D deficient, okay? One of the reasons uh, could be is because you're magnesium deficient, okay? And you're probably asking yourself, like, how does magnesium play a role with vitamin D? And what we've learned in science is that many hormones and also vitamins and also even um, minerals are paired up as brother and sister. As a matter of fact, when you look at the human body, like for a woman, for instance, a woman is known to have estrogen in her body and a man is known to have testosterone. But actually, both men and women have both hormones in them. Men have estrogen and testosterone and women have estrogen and testosterone, okay? But the ratios are very different, okay? And they help to balance each other. And what I mean by that is this. If you become estrogen dominant, which could create a cancer in the body and the reproductive organs like breast cancer, the body quite often will balance that by increasing the amount of testosterone in the body. Okay, so we have these balancing acts that go along with hormones. But
but we also have hormones that catalyze the reaction of another hormone and other minerals as well, okay? And so when you're magnesium deficient, you will have issues with your vitamin D, okay? So just a really important point because 80% of the population is actually magnesium deficient, okay? So huge, huge reason. The next thing in which most people know uh, will cause a vitamin D deficiency is a lack of sun exposure, okay? And when you think about our culture today, most people are getting virtually no sun. I mean, people are leaving the house, going out the front door, getting into a car that shields them away from the, the sun. They're driving in that car, they arrive in a parking deck that then has a bridge that leads them directly into the office, no sun. Sit in that office for eight to 10 hours, and then go through that bridge back into that car, travel home, and then get right back into the house. Never having any sun exposure. And as a result, many people will have vitamin D deficiency. Okay? You have to understand that up until the last 100 years of the human existence, we lived an outdoor lifestyle, okay? We worked outside, we lived outside, especially when you think about before the 1950s or so when there was no air conditioning. Most people sat outside on the porch or worked outside during the day doing manual labor. Um, being exposed to the sun for eight, 10 to 12 hours a day, okay? Being exposed to fresh air. We don't have those conveniences today, okay? We're not being outside being exposed to the sun, okay? We have long sleeves on, long pants, and so we're just not being exposed to the sun like we're, we were before. And if you have darker skin like myself, you need even more sun exposure So compared to your lighter kind of part. So that's a huge reason uh, that a lot of people are not only vitamin D deficient, but are actually very sensitive to the sun as well. So they get you know, sunburn very quickly. They get rashes from the sun. I've even heard people say they're allergic to the sun. But what's important to understand is that for thousands of years, we lived an outdoors lifestyle, okay? And because we haven't had this relationship with the sun like we have in the past thousands of years, um, we begin to become very sensitive to the sun, even if you're a darker skinned person like myself. So, you have to kind of wing yourself back into the sun. That's a huge importance because a lot of people will say, well, I just can't be in the sun. You have to wing yourself back into it. So maybe 10 minutes of exposure and then cover up. And then maybe the next week you do maybe 15 minutes of exposure, but you have to wing yourself back in the, into the um, having sun exposure. Okay. That's really, really important because that's the, that's the way we were intended to get our vitamin D. Okay, we we're intended to get our vitamin D from the sun. Okay, but one of the issues that we may have is we may have poor skin health. And if you have poor skin health, you have to understand this is like a solar panel. And when the sun hits our skin, it's supposed to convert that sunlight under the skin into a form of vitamin D. Okay, but if you have unhealthy skin, it won't be able to do that. So it's really important. That's a huge, huge reason, okay? The third reason is because you don't eat enough of healthy fats, okay? And the reason why that's so important, and when I say healthy fats, of course, you know, I advocate for a plant-based lifestyle. So when I say healthy fats, I'm talking about healthy fats like avocados. I'm talking about healthy fats like nuts, seeds, okay? These are healthy fats, incorporating those into your lifestyle. OK, I'm not talking about oils specifically because a lot of people think healthy fats and they think oils. But I'm talking about getting those healthy fats from the source. OK, so when you think, you know, olive oil, eat the olive. When you think grapeseed oil, eat the grape. When you think avocado oil, eat the avocado. These are healthy fats. And the reason why healthy fats are so important is because, again, vitamin D is actually not a vitamin, it's a hormone. All hormones are made from cholesterol or healthy fats. If you're not eating healthy fats, then it won't have anything to make the vitamin D from that backbone, okay? So that's a huge reason as well. The fourth reason is because the kidneys aren't converting the vitamin D into its active form. So there's two forms of vitamin D. There's the inactive form that doesn't do anything, 
and then there's the active form that performs all the functions that I mentioned before. Okay, and part of the job of the kidneys is to convert the vitamin D from its inactive form to its active form. Okay, so if you have unhealthy kidneys that unfortunately are saturated with toxicity and are saturated with acid, then unfortunately you won't be able to convert that vitamin D into its uh, uh, active form. And that's a huge reason because so many people today are having kidney issues. So many people are getting transplanted. So many people have high blood pressure, which is directly related to kidney health. Okay. Dialysis clinics are popping up in urban neighborhoods and black communities like McDonald's now. I mean, you can go in a black community and see just as many McDonald's as you'll see dialysis clinics. Okay. That's telling you that our kidneys are failing us. Okay. And it's becoming a really huge is issue. Okay. So kidney health is a huge, huge player in the reason why you could be vitamin D deficient. Okay. Another great reason is because your actual gut isn't absorbing the vitamin D. So let's say you're getting enough vitamin D from the sun. You're getting enough vitamin D from your diet. The kidneys are, the kidneys are functioning well, but if your, your gut isn't actually absorbing the vitamin D to then go into the blood, then you'll have a deficiency, okay? You'll be deficient in vitamin D, okay? So if you have poor gut health, bloating, indigestion, Crohn's disease, irritable bowel syndrome, okay? Most people have between 10 and 25 pounds of undigested food just sitting in their gut, rotting and putrefying, okay? This creates a, a condition in the gut known as dysbiosis, which causes an overgrowth of the bad bacteria that then blots out or kills the good bacteria in your gut, okay? Which also helps to develop vitamin D, okay, for us as well, okay? So your gut health plays a very critical role in your vitamin D levels, okay? So that could be a huge reason because most people are constipated. 75% of the, the population are, are constipated, okay? So that tells me that most people will probably have issues with vitamin D and other minerals and micronutrients as well, okay? Another reason could be because of too much fat or excess weight or obesity, okay? And the reason why being obese or having too much fat on your body, because I've seen people who are skinny but have a very low lean muscle content. So they will look petite but their body has a high fat ratio, okay? And even, so you can be a lean person or you can be a person who, will, who is um, visually obese. But if you have a high fat content in your body, that fat will actually pull the vitamin D out of your blood, okay? So obesity will lead to um, vitamin D deficiency as well. Okay. Also the li liver issues. Number seven, uh, if you have a saturated liver and what I mean by a saturated liver is if you're overeating processed foods, if you have fatty liver disease, your liver will have complications with also converting vitamin D as well. Because when you take vitamin D in the body, it has to be converted in the liver and it also has to be converted in the kidneys as well. So if you have a toxic liver, which most people have because they eat a lot of toxic foods, they drink a lot of toxic water, they breathe in toxicity, okay? Because air pollution can also cause issues with vitamin D levels as well. Toxicity can also lead to this as well. So your liver health is a key determinant when it comes to vitamin D levels as well. And then the last thing, which is the most obvious, is an unhealthy diet, okay? And what I will tell you is that if you have an unhealthy diet and you you can take all of the vitamin D supplements you want, your vitamin D levels will not be corrected. You cannot overcompensate through supplementation and compensate for a very unhealthy diet, okay? That's just not gonna happen. And that's the conversation that many people or many health practitioners aren't having with their patients. They give them these supplements, maybe 5,000, you know, um, maybe 5,000 a day. Maybe they're giving the once a week or the once a month 
25,000 international units and they're saying, voila, you go home. This should do well for you. But supplementation can never compensate for a very poor diet. I'm just trying to tell you because when you have a unhealthy diet, that is also going to lead to a magnesium deficiency because you're not going to have micronutrients in those type of unhealthy foods. Okay. It's also going to lead to dysbiosis in the gut that I talked about before. So you won't be able to absorb the vitamin D. Okay. It's also going to lead to a high fat content or percentage of fat in the body or obesity. Okay. Which I mentioned before, will pull the vitamin D out of the blood. Okay. For use. Okay. And that's a really huge, uh, huge, huge factor. So an unhealthy diet can never compensate for supplementation. So if you're taking vitamin D and you're still having issues, it's probably because you haven't adjusted the diet and you haven't adjusted your exposure to the sun as well. So those are my eight. I hope this helps you. If you have some sort of vitamin D deficiency, I hope this sort of sheds some light on what kind of things you can do at home for yourself to correct your vitamin D deficiency. But all of these things are factors. All of these things have to be in place for you to have adequate levels of vitamin D. So I hope this video has been useful. If you like it and you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, and even comment to let me know that you love this kind of con content and I'll make sure I keep it coming. Um, also, I'll sort of give you a bonus. Um, the bonus is this. The bonus is if you really want to take your health to the next to the next level, detox and cleanse yourself. Okay. You have to understand there are years of built up toxicity in our body. And when I say toxicity, I'm talking about food toxins, food chemicals, acidity, mucus, heavy metals, the list goes on and on because these are the things that are allowed in our food supplies, our house cleaning products, our hygienic products, our cosmetic products. And if they go in our skin or go through our, our mouths, it ends up in our body and then it accumulates in our body. And if you do a detox and a cleanse, it will take your health to a next level as well, as well as the number one thing you need to do is adopt a healthy lifestyle. Okay. So, uh, if you want more information about that, you can go to my website, check out my book, Vegetation Over Medication. It's essentially like a Bible on food is medicine. Okay. And you can also check out my 28 day detox on my website as well. drbobbyprice.com. Until the next time, peace and blessings and Godspeed. And I'll see you in the next video.